Hello friends. Uh, today's another beautiful day on the homestead and, and we have uh, some neat things we're going to do today. We're going to try to do some finishing. Uh, it's always good when a project's coming near, near completion and, and you can feel it. You can feel that, that end push and that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I had to use my trailer the other day to, to uh, sell an old bush hog. So I'm going to go there and, and rebuild that, the sides. I'm going to take you along with me. You can see another piece of our equipment, another part of our homestead. That sure makes you appreciate those crane operators that can set a girder, you know, <laughs> thousands of feet or hundreds of feet in the air and, and set it right where it needs to be. I don't have those skills. This is the most amazing trailer. It's uh, it's not new, it's not pretty, but it's so helpful. It uh, is a dump trailer, and at one time it probably had metal sides on it. Uh, in a previous life, someone cut those sides off. So when Bonnie and I got it, we, we added these wooden sides, and, and it's in pretty rough condition. Uh, but it gets uh, a lot of trips um, to the landfill or to pick up supplies, it can pick up mulch, wood chips, sand, topsoil, road base, shell. And uh, this weekend I, I sold a bush hog, so I had to take off the sides and use it as a flatbed uh, because the bush hog was just too wide to go on anything that I own. So it's very versatile, it's very useful, but it looks like I need to take a moment, and that's what it is, you, you get so busy, uh, sometimes you just don't stop to fix things and you can see where the side here is coming undone the uh, at the landscape supply it got hit with a, uh, a front end loader and uh, ripped the side off so I have a couple of these boards I'm gonna go ahead and cut them down and, and put them in and you know while I'm here you know it only take a few minutes I'm gonna take a few minutes and fix it so let me get the door on it and then I'm gonna take you someplace I don't think you've ever been and I have a shop that's dedicated to woodworking and home repair. So I will show that to you as well.
this wood is left over, salvaged. So I'm looking forward to uh, being able to use, this is all uh, cedar here. So I don't know, shot might be looking a little pretty here after a little while. But, uh, anyway, the boards we're using today, we've had uh, laying around here for probably 10 years. Um, wasn't something I purchased, it was something my dad had purchased for a project and he passed away about two and a half years ago and um, so I'm, I've kind of inherited this space at least to use temporarily and uh, enjoying it. Uh, but it's been a long haul kind of making it useful. When I first started When I first came into this space, you could hardly move, and it's taken two and a half years to even make it somewhat uh, functional again. And I know he was frustrated by the fact that he couldn't find things and uh, just had, had struggled getting organized. It just, you know, sometimes life weighs you down, and, and more things doesn't solve the problem. Sometimes lightening the load letting things go solves the problem. So Bonnie and I and my mom, we've been working really hard, my brothers, to kind of lighten the load here and make this place uh, be the dream that he always hoped it would be. To have a, a well-organized, functional, uh, practical wood shop. I mean, this is an amazing space, three bays double depths, so probably a six car garage equivalent. And uh, so I, I've let you in a little inside. I let you come in and peek inside this space and it isn't where we hope it will be, but man, we're further along than we, we were um, six months ago, a year ago, year and a half ago. Every day we get a little bit better. Every day we improve. Um, and sometimes I feel really overwhelmed be honest I feel overwhelmed many days and uh, but we're making progress we're making progress hey I gotta get this trailer done let's go get let's go get busy right all right when you're working with pressure treated wood there's a few things you need to know one is that older pressure treated wood sometimes is much more difficult to work with um, when you get it uh, and it's and it's relatively new it's wet um, if you can put it together, um, build it in a wall or, or form it or shape it when it's, when it's wet, it'll, it'll kind of conform to that, that shape. But what'll happen is it dries many times. It starts trying to twist. And, and if you ever go to a lumber yard and the, and the pressure treated wood is too dry, you won't enjoy working with it. It'll be hard because this is so old. You know, there was a danger in using it, but it's free. So that danger is lessened. And because this is old, uh, the same thing goes into effect. But because it was laid flat and it, and it dried well, and, and it actually originally we had stacked a lot of wood on top of it, it really maintained its shape well and dried really straight. So we were, we were blessed that way. Now, when I built this trailer originally, I didn't leave gaps. Uh, much much wider than the width of the screw but as it dried it shrank and in shrinking it these gaps got larger so I'm mimicking those gaps by and by knowing this isn't going to shrink um, and putting it here so it's actually a little bit more stable um, maybe my my screws will be a little bit more solid it still won't withstand a, a front end loader um, but otherwise it's pretty good the other, the other hint I would give you, and I've, I've kind of come into that problem here recently, is I don't like to overdrive my screws. I believe once you kind of pierce the surface and do more than a countersink, because these drills, I mean, even battery operated drills, they'll drill right through this thing. And that screw will just keep going through. But if you, if you, if you go too deep, you weaken your boards. And, and then you create a place for rot to get in. So I like to just go to the countersink and just go below the surface. Now, if you're filling it, um, painting it, those type of things that might be a little different, you might want to go just a little bit more, but I don't go a whole lot more. You don't want to break the fibers of those wood. Of that wood. So I like to just 
uh, drive it in, and then just countersink it just a little bit. And that's just uh, it's helpful for me. And then when I want to take it apart, guess what? It's a whole lot easier to find that screw and back it out. You saw where I struggled with some and had to break some off. There's one right in here I can't get out. Those fibers of the wood came over the top of it. You can barely see that it's there. And uh, it's just it's just no fun. No fun at all. So anyway, I got to get the rest of this trailer put together, don't I? See where I need to kind of clamp that to, to get those places, bind those places up. If I don't clamp it, that's when I'll have a tendency to overdrive it. I'll let my screw be my clamp. Well, screws aren't meant to be clamps. Um, and that's where you'll overdrive it. So if I clamp it first, I got the joint I need, I have it tight, then I can just let the screw be the screw. All right, we're back in business. Trailer's ready to go. Didn't cost me anything, all my materials were already on site. It cost me time, that's my most precious resource, but at least it's not hanging over my head, something needs to be done. So it was worth the time. There we go, now we're back in business. Now we can go get some more road base and finish up Bonnie's project. And, uh, and the trailer looks a little better. Hopefully it'll function. Hey, maybe we'll get a few more years out of this beast. And uh, hey, Maybe the forklift driver or the front end loader won't crush the sides today. <laughs> oh, well, everybody makes mistakes, not a big deal. So anyway, let's go, let's go get our product.